Hi, this is Adam Elio Berkowitz from the Golan. I'm here with my dear friend, Josh Wander. Uh, he's uh, on the Mount of Olives. We're, we've been discussing um, the, the upcoming U.S. elections quite a bit. It has huge impacts, I think, for Israel and the world, which is why we're so deeply concerned as Jews in Israel. Um, Josh actually is a bit of an expert. He was, uh, when he was living in the U.S., he was the Republican candidate uh, for, nominee. nominee for the mayor in Pittsburgh. So he was politically active. Uh, you also served in the Air National Guard, didn't you? Yeah, but I, I'm, politically, I also was uh, in the Knesset here. Ah, right. I was an advisor to one of the factions in the Knesset. So I have uh, really which faction experience Moledit. Oh, so really? I, I okay, had uh, cool. I have experience in both uh, both Wait, both sides Moledit of the county? pond. Was yes. Moledit? Oh gosh. Okay. So so we've never really been on opposite sides of the fence. <laughs> Moledit Moledit was um, I don't want to call them right wing. They were. They were very patriotic um, and pro-Israel, which is not always a given in politics. Um, and so I, I really would like to hear what Josh has to say about a lot of these questions and concerns that have been bothering me about the upcoming um, American election. The American election has an awful lot to do with Israel. Um, so tell me, the last four years of Biden, and we have to include Harris on this, how do you think they've been relating to Israel? I would disagree. I I, I love disagreeing with you, Elio, and I would disagree <laughs> with your premise that uh, it has a lot to do with uh, America, Israel. Um, we, we put way too much um, weight into what America wants from us and our belief that we are dependent on uh, on the United States for our existence, our, our mere existence. And I think that's a mistake. I think it's a mistake uh, policy-wise. I think it's a mistake uh, spiritually. I think it's a, it's in, in mm -hmm. real terms, I think it's a mistake. And uh, unfortunately, many people have fallen for that. That having been said, the, every president of the United States in my lifetime, in our lifetimes, has always claimed to have been pro-Israel, um, whether it be uh, from the right or from the left, from the Democrats, from the Republicans. Um, but the, everyone knows that there's a big difference between the pro-Israel of a Clinton and Obama and the pro-Israel of a, of a Reagan and a Trump. <clears throat> They're very different pro-Israels. One uh, believes that being pro-Israel means that we're going to unilaterally uh, force Israel to do what we think is in its best interest. And the other is more allowing of Israel to do what they believe is in their best interests, and that there's a, there's a huge difference between those, and and that I think that that already gets lost on most people, most American, most Jewish Americans. They they just think you know everybody's pro-Israel, um, but just because someone claims to be pro-Israel to get the Jewish votes in America doesn't actually mean that they actually are supporting what the best interests of Israel. Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to say you disagreed with me and you were right. Um, That's always the case. <laughs> not always, but um, especially in this case, uh, on one level, of course, I mean, we're, we're different. We're, we're Israel. Um, it's, it's, we, we're beyond politics. We have, one protector, one guardian, one one God that we're 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 dependent upon. I also remember um, there was a point at which I realized, you know, when 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 America started making, un, especially under Obama, um, un, what I saw is destructive demands on Israel. Um, 
Lieberman was still in the government. And I remember thinking, we need Russia more than we need America. They have they have large bases right across the other side of the border in Syria. Um, they're much more connected to Iran than America. <laughs> and uh they have a lot of natural resources that we need. That's, they uh, have the a States lot of that. natural resources. 20% of Israelis are Russian. Putin has actually been um, very connected with Israel in a positive way. Uh, so on, well, until the Russian-Ukraine war. Until the Russian-Ukraine war. Um, and I think Israel was did a very good job of um, walking walking that thin line of not giving um, offensive military help to Ukraine um, while still giving humanitarian aid to them. So we do have other allies besi besides the U.S., not very many, um, and allies that would make less demands on us and certainly not demands that are destructive. Um, so that being said, um would you say that Biden also I, I just wanted to add to that that people mistakenly believe that the American aid that's provided to Israel every year, which is a, a considerable amount of, of money, um, they believe that that is just because of the generosity of the United States, right? Not understanding that all most of that money has to go back to America to purchase weapons. Number one. Number two, if it wasn't in the U.S.'s interests to dole out that money, then we would not be seeing that money. The, the interests are obviously uh, on both sides, and that's why it's not, it's not just because of the goodness of their hearts that they are they're providing that aid. It's interesting that the, the anti-Israel elements in the Democratic Party are really, they have a deep hatred of America. Even though they're in the American government, um, they have a deep hatred of the American system and what America stands for and American values. And as a result, they also hate Israel. So it is in America. We were a natural ally on a certain level. We could turn to Russia. But um, I think on an ideological level, we're a much more natural ally with America. And it's in America's interest to to promote that. Um I'm not sure I agree. I think that uh, America supplies lots of aid, for example, to some of our enemies. That's true. Uh, they, they provide, um, we know they provide aid to countries that are openly uh, antagonistic against, against us. And they also provide aid to countries which may seem to be uh, our friends, but everyone knows otherwise. For example, one of the largest um, foreign aid budgets uh, packages that is given out by the, uh, the United States every year is to Egypt. Um, Egypt purchases <laughs> a, an enormous amount of weaponry uh, with that budget, a uh, ridiculous amount of tanks and missiles. And it's not because they're afraid that one day Sudan is going to come and invade them. Um, those are all being stocked up for eventually to be used against Israel. I think that that's, to, to me, that's very clear. Um, so I, I think that America plays uh, both sides of the game. And uh, again, that's in their interests and they're welcome to do what's in their interests. I think what actually, what might be in Israel's best interest is not to accept any aid um, that have strings, that has strings attached to it from the United States. Because um, I don't think that as a as sovereign country, we should be, if anything, we have we should have learned through our very long, tragic uh, history as Jews is that we can never be dependent on other nations for our survival. And uh, and that's I think, has been lost on many Israeli governments. But I think that that's an, uh, that that should be obvious to and anyone even in America. Which war was it that America believes in the. Which, uh, which war was it that America did not send us the weapons that they promised us until like the very last? Was that seventy three? Because or? because of the Jewish uh, uh, Secretary of State was that Henry Kissinger it? who uh, told them. Yeah, 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 Kissinger, the Jew. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. but more specifically, uh, I personally 
you know, I, I when I talk to American Jews, um, I try to explain to them why I that that Biden is horribly anti-Israel, and they just don't see it. It's kind of scary. I mean, it all began. I mean, this this horrible, horrible anti-Israel policy. I think. I mean, it of course it did have its roots in Clinton, but I mean, when Obama pushed forward the 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 JCPOA, the Joint um, Compre- what is it, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, uh, the Iran deal, that was just okay. There's a country that's yelling out death to Israel, death to America, and if you read it. It didn't stop them from having a nuclear weapons program. It delayed it by a tiny bit, really a tiny bit. It was ten years, and how it it took them about that long to actually get to the point where they could make a nuclear weapon. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how much it delayed it, but what it did was fund it. Right, and, uh, right. That's the big. That's the big one thing that has come out as a result of it. Uh, yeah. And and we're seeing it yeah. now. I mean, uh, Trump pulled out of that. Um, I mean, he's just. I mean, he thinks of himself as a deal maker, and I have. I'm, he's much more of a deal maker than I am. And he said it was a lousy deal. Um, it was so. But Biden tried to revive it, and they wouldn't go for it. But as you said, it just opened up the faucets to to hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, and there was a big lie going on. Um, what, what, Iran was about to collapse um, b- because of the sanctions and for a lot of reasons. And they have an oppressive regime that's that's in power through through power, through violence. Um, they, they're oppressing their own people. So they need the money and they need the money for the military. Um, and so when when the sanctions were in place, Iran couldn't couldn't afford to send any proxies to to fund any proxies to attack Israel. So when Biden went back in and turned the faucets back on, that's when Israel got attacked. And that's I think my main I mean and it's so blatantly obvious um that this is why it happened while Biden was in office. This is why the war happened while Biden was in office. And I think they 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 started the war um, knowing that he might not be in office and they wanted to get it in before before he uh, he left. And I mean, there was a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors. Um, if you look at it, they had one of their they, they were selling more oil than ever, even though the oil was supposed to be sanctioned. They were selling it to China. They were making Iran was making tons of money. Um, even the trade with America and England, even though there were supposed to be sanctions, um, went up last year by over forty percent. There were the sanctions, even though they're supposed to be in place, they weren't in place. So Iran, I think, is is the most horrible aspect of the Biden administration that they've totally revived Iran. Their foreign policy is more pro Iran than pro Israel, though they really are trying to play both sides of the fence. And for those people that don't understand the mm-hmm. connection. Uh, it's not just Iran. Uh, Iran has its proxies in right. Lebanon with Hezbollah and in Gaza, in Gaza with uh, with Hamas and the Houthis in in, Tem- in Yemen. All of these are proxies of Iran. They're all being paid for. They're being trained by Iran. Um, so e- this is not just a matter of, uh, of one state against the other, but it's a matter of a the the largest. Uh, terror sponsor of terror uh, in the entire region and possibly the entire world. Right. There's a big problem also that Iran is trying to build a land bridge to the Mediterranean. Um, that's why they they I mean after they they were they were they fought a, a vicious war against Iraq for many years. Uh, now Iran is basically running Iraq, um, also through proxies and militias, um, and they they are controlling Syria. And through Hezbollah, which is 30% of the Lebanese parliament, they have a big controlling interest in Lebanon. That gives them a land bridge to the Mediterranean. And if they have a land bridge to the Mediterranean and they're, they're, they have a stranglehold on the Strait of Hormuz, um, they can do serious damage to the entire um, world of shipping and be a serious threat to America. 
that's uh that's, that's and i think that that's their ultimate goal and 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 that again goes back to your original point that someone who's against israel is also against america because if you're right. funding the 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 uh, the biggest enemies of the united states the ones that will actually want to destroy both the united states and israel the great satan and the little satan um then you're actually you're, you're supporting a party that is openly uh, wants to destroy, to, to self-destruct, to destroy its own its own people and its own nation, which is uh, unfortunate. But we see that in many in many different aspects of the uh, progressive democratic uh, movement, and uh, that's why I think that uh, we have unprecedented numbers um, for the first time in uh, history of Jews, even the the most leftist progressive Jews in America that are abandoning the Democratic Party. I think they, they said yeah. the last statistic I saw was 64 uh, percent are going to be voting Democratic, which is ridiculously low. You Obama got even in, his, even in the second term, um, he was clearly anti-Israel. He got 77 percent of the American Jews. So that's uh, and. And I think you're right. It's 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 a lot. It's not just one issue. If it was just if it was just Israel, um, it might not be such a strong exodus. Um, what they call Jexit, uh, Jews exiting the the Democratic Party. I think it's it's the confluence of all these things um, that are so anti-American, so threatening to America. That you know, one of the things that I that I will. Uh, which I would have revamped. Uh, I th I think I remember it was from his first campaign. I'm pretty sure it was his campaign against Hillary, um, where he where they had this, um, they had a commercial, and they had like a call in the middle of the night about uh, a nuclear war, and they were like, "Who who do you want to answer the phone?" And if you know, who do you want them to wake up in the middle of the night? Do you want it to be Hillary or Trump? Um, when they get the call on the red phone that they're that there's going to be a nuclear war, and I think that the world, the whole world, sees it. I mean, what what has just been realized in the past uh, six months in America, which is that Biden is senile and is not fit for office. Oh my God! Uh, the whole world has known that for for years now, and uh, and and it, America is clearly at its weakest. Or at least seen it as 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 it's at its weakest in in its entire history, and that's why we have all of these battles that are starting, uh, both with North and South Korea and and China and Taiwan and Russia and Ukraine. Everybody realizes that this is an opportunity to uh, to do their land grabs and do whatever they want. Uh, what well, because America is not going to do anything. Well, the the best that we're going to get out of America is this old guy is going to get up and say don't and that that's going to be the end of it have, have you heard have you heard the ben shapiro tell a story about uh about um trump and putin ben ben said that um trump called up putin and he said putin don't go into ukraine and putin is like why not he's like if you do i'll bomb you and putin said no you won't and Trump said, "But I might," <laughs> and and that's his foreign policy. People, you know, people are. There was another story blew me away um, when Trump started his plan to pull out from Afghanistan. He was sitting down with the heads of Taliban, and and he had an interpreter, and he said to the guy, "He's like, he's like." Okay, we don't want you to touch a single hair on a single head of a single U.S. soldier. And the interpreter interpreted, he said, and if you do, I will kill you. And the interpreter's like, I can't say that. He's like, tell him. So he interprets, he, he translates it. And then what does Trump do? He pulls out of his pocket a picture of taken from a satellite of the guy's house. <laughs> and he said to him, you're first. <laughs> And for like as, until he left office, not a single U.S. soldier was was touched. It was amazing. Um, that is his foreign policy. I mean, I remember I remember watching him walk across the no no man's land into North Korea, and I'm like, 
Oh my gosh. That's like he's the president. He's in he's in North Korea. He's walking into North Korea all by himself. I'm like, my God, that's amazing. And you know, even this is a, a certain kind of um guts, intestinal fortitude, bravery, whatever you want to call it. Um, when he got shot, he got shot in the face. Come on, he got shot in the face, and he, he gets up and he pumps his fist, says, "Fight, fight, fight!" Even Mark Zuckerberg, the 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 world's richest weenie, he, he said, "You know, you got to give the guy credit. He's that was pretty badass, you know." And 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 everyone just looked at that. I think that's also when when uh, Elon Musk uh, came over big time. Was if you see a guy like that, that's a leader. That's a leader that can represent you, that will make sure that your country is safe. Um, someone who who can barely talk and who just says, don't. What is that? And even his don't wasn't a don't. And and Kamala Harris did the same thing. She said to the, the immigrants, don't come, don't come. She should have said, don't but come. But if you come, you. vote for us. <laughs> right. But what she should have said if she was a real leader was, if you come, we will lock you up and send you back. That would have done something. That would have done something. But their words mean nothing. So so when it comes to Iran, um, they just gave them, you know, an open door blank check. Um, so that was my my big thing against uh against Obama and then that Biden went along with it. also Biden did that Biden did a lot of things. Um, he, there was, and he denied them all. Um, when Iran first did the missile attack, they they've attacked Israel how many times? Twice with uh, missiles, Iran directly. And yes. the first time, mm-hmm. there was a story that came out that Iran, um, which has warm connections with Turkey, contacted Turkey and said, "Look, we're going to attack Israel. We want to know that America's not going to, you know." Not gonna, not gonna respond. Respond in a harsh way, and not, not militarily. And so they said, you know, let's contact America, tell them we're going to do it. And the Biden administration responded, as long as they keep it within reason, they can attack Israel. I heard that, and I'm like, dude, you don't do that to your allies, even if no one was killed or the. The, the 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 attack was mostly ineffective. You don't green light a, 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 a missile attack on your allies. You don't do that. And that's what Biden did twice. Of course, they denied it, but that was after the State Department already was saying, oh, we told them not. But you told them, so you knew that it was coming. I, I heard that, and I'm just like, wow, that is not what we expected from the American government. Um, and also when they were doing um, uh, negotiations uh, more recently with, with Iran and they were trying to get concessions from Iran, they allegedly gave them the names of 10 Mossad agents in Iran. You don't do that. Um, and also um, the Biden administration, actually this started with the Obama, Obama administration um, Israel and America should have a very close um, intelligence connection. But there were a couple times that Israel was planning to do flyovers and stuff on over Iran, and the Obama administration leaked those plans to Iran. And we recently saw that they, they leaked our plans to Hezbollah, and it prevented us from acting as we should have. Um, it really messed with us. And you don't do that with allies. So, And Trump certainly would not have done that. So as an ally, the Biden administration has not really been a very good ally. They just talk a really good deal. When they get caught with the, with their hands in the cookie jar, they deny it. They say, oh, we didn't. But you did. You know? And and that's that's really, it's it's been very disturbing to me. Um, the Iran aspect of the Biden, I don't know, I don't understand what the Democrat Party from from Obama and Biden 
and it's absolutely going to be Kamala Harris, I don't understand what they get from it. You know, why would they side with Iran? I don't get I mean, I'm I'm old. I'm older than you, Josh. I was 17 years old when um when another great democrat Jimmy Carter uh, allowed the Iranians to the, the 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 Islamists in Iran rather to take over the embassy and take Americans captive. And it's like we're America, why did we let them do it? Um and so I don't understand why Iran is. I mean, all of a sudden we're friends with Iran, it's, with the Islamists in Iran. That I don't understand. That I don't understand. So this 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 Democrat pro Iranian regime uh, platform uh, policy uh, it, it just perplexes me. I don't understand it. Um, and and uh, the crazy thing is. I'm, I've become recently connected with um, Iranian Christians, expatriates who live in America. Apparently, there's an, a Christian revolution happening in Iran that it could turn the government over in a minute. And then we'd have a new government and, and it would be, uh, it would be, it would be, we'd have a new government in Iran and uh, new story. As soon as the uh, Islamist regime is out of out of uh, Iran, you, the Houthis are gone, the 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 Hezbollah is gone, Hamas is gone. I don't understand why we don't support that revolution. So, and and I only see Harris. Have you ever have you had any inclination, any hints that Harris is going to change that? So you you've been breaking in and out. Uh, oh, I'm I, sorry. I, I had I. I, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that a, what I was saying was that I'm again. very confused I'm about the pro-Iranian um, policies of the Democrats, starting with Obama, continued by Biden, and I think Harris. She's. I mean, it's hard to say what she thinks, but I, she seems to be very pro-Iranian as well. It's going to continue. Would you say that's accurate? I, I have no doubt it's going to continue. And uh... ouch. I wish you had said I was wrong. I really wanted to be wrong about that. I also don't believe that that Trump can uh, that Trump is going to to uh, win the the election, um, e even if he wins by land. Uh, why are, why am I kicking out? If you hear the rhetoric that they're right okay now you're now you're jumping into something that i was going to say Later, you can't transfer power over i was going to i was going to save that till the end um and this is why i really wanted to talk to you um but if you open that door we'll we'll, we'll step through um yeah um I so think i'm, I'm going to say i'm going to say something radical um but i i'm not even sure there's going to be an election oh um I mean, it, I believe that if the shall now find a way of suspending the, they will find out a way to suspend the constitution. But uh, to me, it's clear that they can't allow this to to happen. And if and if Trump does, by some miracle, win by a landslide. They will have to find some way of, or, or they'll do exactly what they blamed the Republicans of doing, right? Which is that they 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 said the Republicans were not going to transfer the Democratic power over mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, to Biden, and they're going to do the exact same thing. They're, they just they uh, to me it's it's the writing is on the wall. It's very clear, and it's also writing is on the wall that whenever things go south in a country, um, they're going to blame the Jews. Regardless of who wins the election, assuming there is one, half of the population is not going to accept the results of that election, and it's it's going to be chaos. It's going to be absolute uh, uh, mayhem in the streets. So I I, I I'm very scared for the for the United States and specifically for the Jews that are in the United States of of what the result of this uh, this election is going to bring. But uh, it, I, I am very pessimistic about uh, 
the aftermath, the day after. In fact, I, I, I'll go a step further and say that I think the reason that Kamala chose Tim Waltz to be her running mate is because they were already con- thinking about the day after. Um, Tim Waltz doesn't really make sense uh, as a running mate. He's not even popular in his own state of Minnesota. Uh, the only thing that he has going for him, as opposed to Josh Shapiro, who was in a swing state of Pennsylvania and actually could have helped their campaign, Tim Waltz energizes the extreme left. Uh-huh. And if you're thinking about the, the day after and you're thinking about how to create as much chaos as possible uh, the day after the election, then Tim Waltz is 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 really her man. He feels comfortable when there's riots in the street. Exactly. Um, yeah, you, you touched on something um, that really evil people, people who are getting ready to do evil – they always want to blame other people for doing exactly what they're going to do. Um, So they make such a big deal out of January 6th. Um, It happened. It was a thing, but not a huge thing. Um, And something that was not really investigated. But yeah, I mean, Biden literally said um, Donald Trump should be locked up. And they've certainly weaponized the Department of Justice and the FBI um, against Trump. Um, and if they wanted to put him behind bars, it's like, you know, the the, the groundwork is already done. Um, and and that's 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 crazy. Uh, the fact that the DOJ did operate against him from even before he was elected and entered the office. Um, and. He's been compared to Hitler so many times. So you can see if he wins the election, they'll just say, we can't let Hitler into the White House. And most of the Democrats will say, oh, yeah, you're right. We can't let Hitler into the White House. And they'll buy it. And I'll be like, you know, there are a few differences between, you know, Hitler and Donald Trump. I can think of six million tiny reasons that Trump is not like Hitler. But you touch there then you have to understand that there's much more threat than just trump here we have uh the two people that he's mentioned that he wants in his uh in his cabinet are probably the biggest threats to the system that exists today which is uh rfk um junior oh yeah who, who who wants to revamp the entire um the entire uh um, medical field and the entire the entire right. uh, health services, and you have Elon Musk who says that he's going to streamline the whole system by eighty percent, getting rid of all. Imagine somebody getting up and saying, "I'm going to I'm going to fire eighty percent of the federal government." There's going to be there's so much opposition right now coming from every direction to make sure that Trump does not get in and put these people in power. That's another thing that you know I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of Trump in the past. But he has, this time around, managed to broaden the camp. He's turned, um, he's turned the Republican Party into a, into a big camp party. Uh, he's brought in, he's attracted people who are not um, natural Republicans. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, she was, in her day, the, the, the wonder child of the Democrat Party. She was, you know, and I have a lot of respect for her. Um, she's a smart lady. She's very tough. She was in the military. You know, I don't agree with her with, on everything, but she has these powerful attributes. RFK, I mean, he was, you know, he's from 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 Democratic royalty, the Kennedy family, and for him to go with Trump, um, he's like his whole family came out against him. Um, Elon Musk, you know, they say, oh, he's a right wing. He's not right wing. He was always a liberal. You know, <laughs> Trump has managed to to build this camp. He's 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 moderated. Trump is not actually a classical Republican, but he's made a much bigger camp. Um, Tulsi Gabbard, her big thing was was free speech. Um, that the government was 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 oppressing people and had weaponized the DOJ and and was was suppressing speech and. And misin they they accuse you know Trump of misinformation, but wow, um, 
So Trump has really made you know the fl- the flip side of this is that you see a lot of the rhinos that are coming out of the woodwork right now, uh, the Dick Cheney's and 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 the um... Ooh, well Dick Cheney came out and endorsed um, uh, um, Kamala, which that's what that I'm terrified. That's, me. that's what I'm saying. The, the, them and what what was uh, I'm I'm blanking on it. The, 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 who was the uh, war hero that uh, Trump? Supposedly attacked that, that was running for president. Um, the, why am I blanking on his name? The 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 the, the POW. Oh, right. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I blanked on him too. Anyway, the, guy with so the, he, the big thing on his cheek. Right. So his daughter, his daughter also came out for for Kamala. Um, you you see that that slowly but surely, there's a lot of people that. Uh, they claim to be lifetime Republicans that are abandoning the ship because this is not the kind of rep- they they prefer the Republican Party that's uh, closer to the Democrats. I mean, Dick Cheney is terrifying because, I mean, even, you know, I mean, even the most hardcore Republican looks at Dick Cheney and says, dude, you know, you don't have to murder half the world. You know, <laughs> he's he's a warmonger in the extreme. You know, he's the warmonger that makes warmongers. Well, uh, whatever, whatever he profits from, I don't think it's he's a warmonger. <laughs> right. By nature. I think it's just he, he realizes how much he could profit from right. from war. Um. So, yeah. So also there's this new. So but you're touching on something that really terrified me. Um. That's actually does go beyond politics. Uh, which is, and I'm I'm glad you said it, that even if they, Trump is talking about, you know, everyone's got to go out to vote. One reason is, um, from what I understand, the, if they're low propensity voters, uh, will vote Trump. Um, and uh, the, according to the demographics, and the polls tend to under poll Trump, because people don't want to say to a stranger, I support Trump. Because there's such a stigma attached, and Trump is saying um, the, the the expression is "make it too big to rig," meaning that make it such a landslide that they can't take it away. But there's I, already cheating going on. You should know right. that. Uh, I can tell you a personal anecdote that uh, five uh, ballots were sent in by my family a week ago, and have not yet been. They they were stamped in the post office. They should have arrived the next day. You know, two days if there was if it was slow. Um, a week later, and none of them have been received in uh, Pen- in the swing state of Pennsylvania. Correct me so, if I'm wrong, uh, but that happened in 2020 with um, all, all the Pittsburgh bo- voters in Israel. That's you- right. That's right. And well, well, we we learned not to send them from Israel because 90 percent of Israel is pro Trump. So uh, whenever they see, and that's why also we why we advise people not to send it through the embassy here because they can convenient conveniently just lose all of the all the ballots. Right, because um, they know that majority of them are going to Trump. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 there are already ca- many court cases that are already starting even before the election, because there's a lot of funny business going on. Um, there's a lot of talk about the different machines that are not working and not uh, in different locations and I are think not. It was uh, the was it Michigan? The attorney general gave a gave a press conference where she said the Dominion machines are there's a big problem with them. And did you hear about the the television station broadcasting the results? Yep, it's insane. It was a it was Pennsylvania, wasn't it? It, it was, was forty seven to fifty three. Yeah, yeah. They 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 public they put on the screen the results of the election seven Cam- days before Kamala the election, yeah. and yeah. and saying Kamala Harris won. You know, Oops. before the election. Oops. <laughs> I remember we were just we were just practicing. That's all right. right. No, it was it was a test. <laughs> really <laughs> fascinating. I, I still remember in 2016, I think it was CNN. I think it was CNN that when the results came out and Trump won, there was a panel of you know the 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 the, the um journalists, the, the 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 people and the and 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 there was this one woman she said. No, they can't do that. They can't tell us Trump. We already called it. And it just started. What do you mean you already called it? You read the news. You don't even count unless you voted. And then you count like me, you know? But they're saying, we already called it. Who are you? And 
it seems to be happening again. So, you know, too big to rig is an interesting concept that may not exist. So that's kind of scary. But what you not, not to about, mention the tens of millions of illegals that are that have been welcomed through the southern border and they're and finding they're given that the a lot of them are voting. Vote. Um, so yeah, a lot of them are yes, voting, sure, which is scary. And you'll have many Democrats say, No, it's illegal, no, but they're doing it. Proof. Um, but but the other point that you said, the stage after what happens. You're saying that there's not going to be elections. I don't know. That would, you know, people will show up and they'll scream. I've heard that polling stations are shutting people out, shutting down early, that kind of thing. Elio, you're breaking up. I don't know if you hear me, but uh, I, I hear I, you. You're just I hear totally you. breaking up. I hear so, you. Uh, um, I hear you. maybe we should try to cut it short because okay, it's, uh, I want to make one more. I, I'm point, not hearing what you're which saying. is. Which is, yeah, if 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 the election does come off and will they let Trump into office? That would be the end of America as we know it. It's I, I, I don't believe so. I, I, I think that they will do whatever is in their power I, to make sure, whether it's before, during, or after the election, to make sure that Trump does not get in. And uh, I, I just cannot imagine, I think the writing's on the wall, I cannot imagine a scenario in you which know, the Democratic Party will. We were, we were, talk, to, to we were talking about again. them accusing other people of doing what they intended to do. They're making a big deal of, oh, Trump is going to weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. And I'm like, first of all, you've already done that. Which is exactly what they did. But mm -hmm. I think you're right. There are way too many skeletons in the closets for them to let Trump go into the White House. Because the first time around, the deep state and the FBI and the deep state, Trump was an outsider. He was clueless. This time around, he knows he knows where the pulleys and the levers are. Um, and I think I think he's not he's not a pushover. Um, I think he's he's going to go in uh, loaded for bear, find out where the skeletons are, who the dirty players are. I think he's going to he's going to take care of it. Um, as an aside, I wrote a I wrote a, a an op ed once. One of the Noahide laws is to do justice, to have court systems. So in order to be a ruler of one of the nations, Trump has to fix the justice. He has to bring justice to America, make make justice work. Um, and if he does well, that... Well, in 48 hours, we will we'll, uh, start to understand what's uh, starting to unfold. But it really will only... It'll be January 20th, obviously, is going to be the date that everybody should be looking at. Because even, even if Trump win, wins by a landslide, what happens between the election and January 20th is going to be key. And the scary part is, who's going to be president in that time? It's like Joe who's Biden. Who's president now? Who's president now? <laughs> uh, though what's interesting is there seems to be friction between Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But it would be bizarre. Well, I, I don't. I don't think that Joe Biden actually stepped down. I think that he was he was forced out, and the the whole way that uh, he dropped out by sending a tweet. Uh, right. uh, with with a letter which wasn't even signed by him, it, it, the whole thing does it sounds like a... you know that's that's another aspect of why I think you're right that they're not going to let him in because they and another time they're 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 accusing him of what they're going to do. They say Trump is a threat to democracy. Well, Kamala Harris never got a vote, that's and correct. she was made the candidate. How did that happen? Because an elite within the party decided. And so they don't care about elections. They don't care about votes. The people who make the decisions are just going to do it. And they and they say, you know, Trump is anti-democracy. No, the Democrats are anti-democracy, and they're not hiding their cards. They are they're telling everyone exactly what they're going to do. I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. It's living in scary times.
we are living in very scary times. Um, and like you said, you know something? Israel, I feel I have never been so proud of Israel as I have been in the last year. Um, we really are relying just on Hashem. And because there's no one else left to rely on. Um, and we're, 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 we're doing what we should. We're, we're doing the right thing. And it's shocking the world. It's shocking the world. And I'm so proud of Israel. Israel is going rogue. <laughs> right. And we're, yeah. Um, uh, and it's not politics. It's like we are Am Yisrael. We are the nation of Israel. We're, and and it's like we are redefining what a Jew is. It used to be, you know, a Jew was this guy who lived in the shtetl, the money lender, whatever. And now we're like, no, we are the offspring of King David and King Solomon. We are a nation. We are the oldest nation. You want to see what a nation is? Look at us. We'll show you what nations do. And I'm so proud. And the younger generation, God bless them. Man, I came here fully Zionistic, but... But these guys, they're really doing it. Anyway, Josh, hopefully we'll have a much more upbeat conversation in three days. Um, God willing. Uh, God willing. Well, we'll have, definitely have more information. I don't know about a more upbeat, but uh, let's, let's oh, stay please, tuned. Please. Thank you so much, Josh. We'll have to do part Put two. Put on your seatbelts and uh, get ready for a... I'm me. That's right. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks so much. Be blessed, Josh. Bye-bye.